Hey, welcome to JG3 Reviews. My name is James, and I do fountain pen, ink, and paper reviews. And today, it is a first impressions review of this pen, the Crocodile Green Resin Pen, and an intro to a company that is new to me, may not be new to you. If you know anything about the Crocodile Pen Company, please share information in the comments below. Seems to me that it is related to the Kaigaloo Pen Company. There are some similarities in the way that they promote the pens and the way that they've made the pens and the way they integrate their mascot on the nib and things like that. So I think maybe they are related to Kaigaloo pens, but you can correct me if I happen to be wrong on that. Anyway, this is is a really good first impression looking pen. You may or may not like the crocodile clip, but the resin is really quite striking. But as we look at the pen, we're going to look at the details. We're going to look at the way that it's made, how well or not well the pen is made. I'll give you specifications and that all important part of the test. How does the pen write? Let's let that camera dive right in. Okay, let's dive into the design of the Crocodile Fountain Pen, and let's start with the obvious stuff first. Like, there is a slight difference in the black that you see here on this end cap and the Oh, wait, you're, you're, you're not thinking that this is the most obvious design? You don't think this is the most obvious design feature? You think, oh, the, the crocodile, the clip. Oh, well, fine. Let's go with the clip. Now, maybe it's because I just went on a trip that included Louisiana, or maybe I'm just softening in my old age. But I would have thought in the past that this was a little bit tacky. Maybe I even still do. But I... I think it's fun. I like it. I got no problems with it. I actually think it's a little bit cool. Not the kind of pen I would carry most of the time, but I like the Crocodile. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you that straight up front. Uh, it is a good stiff clip. It actually works and it's functional. If it weren't functional, maybe I would change my mind, but it actually works. And that's more than you can say for some pens uh, clips. I'm looking at you, Mr. Keiko Edge over there. Anyway, I do like it. There is also another crocodile up here on the cap finial. Then you do have trim bands. You have the trim band between this resin finial. That is a resin finial. I'll get to that here in a second. And then two more here. You'll notice this looks a lot like the uh, Kaigaloo pen, and that's another reason that I think they may be related, even though they are made differently. It shares some similarities. And, uh, of course, these are all based on older pens that have been around for the better part of a century. Anyway, uh, this little centerpiece, this band here, is metal, and it's lacquered black metal, even though this is black resin with a tiny bit of chatoyancy, and so is this, which you can probably see better than you can the finial at the top of the cap. So I think that's kind of interesting. It was an unusual choice there to have those as different materials, but that is the case. And then the rest is this green resin, which is quite good looking to my eye. I really like that. And then another trim band down here. Then we open up the cap, and let's see how many turns it takes. So that would be one... Two, so just under two. That's good. Keeps the crocodile from getting a little too dizzy. So easy, easy off. I'm going to give that fairly good points for that. And then as I mentioned, it is a metal and resin cap. You can see the resin inside because this whole section is just resin. But this is metal. And then there is metal attaching, I think, the crocodile to the resin there. And... Uh, no plastic sleeve or anything like that. You can see that, that is most likely brass there on this lacquered part of the cap and further up as it attaches to the finial. be interesting to see if dry out is an issue with this or not. And it may not be if these threads seal well. Those are metal on metal and they, uh, they, they are not uncomfortable. Those are well done, the threads, as you can see there. The grip section is also resin, so it might look like it's a little bit dirty. That is actually chatoyancy happening on the grip. A little bit wet because I have cleaned this pen and water came from somewhere. I promise I'm not spitting that much. And uh, I think that actually looks quite nice. It makes for a nice, comfortable grip. Of course, that is a classically shaped grip often used on pens like this. 
All right, as we open up the pen, you see it is metal threads on metal again. Lots of gold blingy trim on this pen, even in the hidden parts. And lots of branding. So here is that Crocodile logo on the converter with, I think, just a nice touch. A green piston handle and green tinted plastic in the clear part of the converter kind of reminds me of that cross green tint a little bit, kind of a similar color to a cross uh, converter that I've got. And that is a Chinese standard converter. Always nice to see those included. Okay, let's look at the nib. It is a two-tone nib. I believe it is a number five, although I have not taken it out to see if it was swappable with any other pins. And it does have the crocodile logo and it says 22 karat gold plating croco croco croc crocromadial 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 i'm going to say that that 22 karat gold plating is probably about as trustworthy as the spelling of crocromadial anyway there, there you go. There, there is that. Kind of like the infamous 18 karat logo on the Jinhao steel nibs, right? Which I've noticed is disappearing. It's not on all their number six nibs anymore. Anyway, uh, interesting nib design. Let's see if it writes here in just a second. Turn it around and it has a plastic feed unfinned with the fine, this is a fine nib, designated on the feed rather than on the nib still still a little bit wet if you look closely you can see better now the chatoyancy of that black section so overall it is a pretty interesting pin let's do a quick size comparison and then we'll see if the crocodile writes or bites before we get into that size comparison, just a bit of a weight analysis of the pen. It is 35 grams, 1.23 ounces, and just over half of those ounces are the cap. So it's going to be a bit back weighted, even though it does post securely. For a quick size comparison, you have it next to a Lamy All Star, and then you have the Kaigaloo 316 and a Pen BBS. Four, five, six, and the Majan M600, and then you have the Platinum Preppy and the Jinhao 51A, and then you have the pins posted, and there are the pins unposted. It dawned on me as I was preparing to ink this pin up that I should let you know this is a very easy converter to maintain. You simply unscrew the metal band, remove that. And remove everything. You can add silicone grease, although this one came pre-greased. You can get rid of that spring if you don't like the springs, as I have just done. And then quick reassemble. Very easy. So this is the crocodile. And I haven't seen a model listing for this pen, a number or a name or anything like that. It just said green marbled pen, so I'll leave it at that. This is a fine, and I think a number five. Not sure how standard or non-standard that may be. And then this is Pelican, dark green. This is a workhorse green ink for me. Very reliable. When I want a green ink that suits a green pen and I'm wanting to know how good the pen is or is not, I use this ink because I know how the ink's gonna perform regardless of the pen. Now you're not going to get, this is a hard steel nib, so don't expect line variation. Don't push that too hard. It's just a normal everyday steel nib. Flow, not too bad. I think that's enough ink. This is writing, I'd say, average smoothness. No code there, just random words. I have no idea if somebody can psychoanalyze that if they want to, but it's not going to mean anything. Anyway, what about this pen? What do I think? First, as I've said, 
I think the design is fun. I wouldn't take this pen too seriously in terms of, well, I don't, I don't want to wear a crocodile to, to work. Well, of course not. But I think this is just kind of a, a fun pen. There might be somebody for whom this is a good gift. Do keep in mind, if you are a chronic poster, it's going to be a little bit back-weighted because of the extra weight of the clip and the brass that is in um, this kind of hybrid material cap. Things I like about the pen, I really like this resin. I think the resin is really nice and it's nicely done. I like the nice touch of a different colored resin. Instead of just black plastic, or lacquered metal that these pieces and the cap finial as well are a black resin very subtle but good looking I like that I like the converter very easy to take apart and maintain and you know they they put some effort into it a little bit of design into it and I like that it's color themed with the pen little things like that you know they just kind of add up to kind of a a fun pen. So uh, whatever you think of the design, I do think it's fun. I like this pen, and I think it's kind of a, a neat way to add a little bit of life to your pen collection. That's my first impression of the Crocodile Fountain Pen. Again, if you know more about this company, have more experience than I with them, please share that in the comments below, and God bless you, and have a great week. <music>